Leeds United are set to play against Millwall on Sunday at 3pm. That doesn't seem right. In a match that could mean a lot at the top of the championship table, Leeds United could take first place for the first time this season so far. But first, let me know what you think down in the comments below, what your predictions for the match, and whilst you're down there, subscribe. Be much appreciated. Anyway, diving into it with the team news, and we still have one player that is out, has been out for a while, and will continue to be out. There are some significant issues going on for Pascal Strouk. What seemed like it happened was they had one way that they were going to try and get him to recover, which was something like injection therapy, which takes a couple of weeks, a few months, something like that. And if it doesn't work out, then the other option is surgery. Surgery would be an immediate season ender. It would have been at the time of his injury. It would be when it happens, if it does happen in a few weeks. Daniel Farker has said that he will give Pascal Stroke until the end of the international break to get back. Then they'll go for the surgery option which means that we're unlikely to see him for the rest of the season, in my opinion, if he doesn't make it back by the international break. In addition to that, we have a few players that are able to come back, which is very nice. Jaden Anthony returns from his personal issues, hopefully in a good sort of emotional position, and Jamie Shackleton is back in the squad. And in addition to that, there has likely been plenty of rest for absolutely everyone. Someone made the note that Jorginho Ruter found the time to go to Disneyland or something like that. Crescencio Somerville hasn't been kicked for the last week which is really good, and it means that he's able to fully train with the rest of the side and everyone is in a much better condition than they were immediately after the most recent match. So, diving into it, my predicted lineup for the match is starting with Melier in net. The way I see it, I think we could see Gray at right back with Joe Rodon, Ethan Ampadu and Junior Furpo finishing off the back line just because that gives you a nice little bit of balance between defence with... Gray, Rodon, and Padu can all do that really well. Furpo gives that nice attack on the left wing where he's able to sort of overlap as Somerville cuts inside. I think that's the perfectly balanced back line. With in front of them two midfielders, Ilya Grove and Glenn Kamara. It's become an old familiar sort of midfield pairing, but it definitely works. Whilst Grove isn't the most playmaking player, he's got Kamara next to him and the system just works. In front of them, a bank of three with Willy Nonto, Jorginho Ruter in the number 10 role and Crescencio Somerville, which would be really effective because I can see all of those players having rested a while, being at full fitness, ripping Millwall apart on a good day. Behind Patrick Bamford, who, when he's playing, seems to make everything click a little bit more effectively. So next up, how Millwall play. This has changed in recent weeks. Neil Harris is back which is a little bit of a problem because Neil Harris is incredibly millwall -y. He's very kicky, very aggressive, and he will turn the game into a bit of a grind. We've dealt with this a lot of times so far this season. They're not a team that are going to bomb on and try and force their own chances. They're a team that are going to just wait, that are going to sort of kick your players. By the second half, you're limping, and then they'll try and run past you. Very millwall. And it works for them. They're unbeaten in the last four matches, and that means you can't really blame them for it. And of course, it's a 4-4-2. What else would it be? It's Neil Harris's Millwall. That's all they really know how to do. In terms of strengths outside of that, they're a team that, when they get a chance, tend to like to put them away fairly effectively. And defensively, they are incredibly solid. Over the last four matches, I'm just going to double check to make sure I've got my numbers right, they have conceded three goals. Is it three? Two goals in their last three matches. One of them against Southampton, the other against Blackburn. So against some really good attacks, they've only conceded twice, which is going to be a potential problem for Leeds because it means that we are going to have to work really hard to get those opportunities. But Millwall do have plenty of weaknesses to discuss as well. First up, they're not the best at finishing and creating their chances. Now, when Millwall defend, they do it effectively. When Millwall attack... It doesn't really work out. They tend to sort of rely on one or two players to get a performance. So, for example, there is a minimal threat outside of Zion Fleming, who has seven goals so far this season, which in itself isn't lots. That's what Patrick Bamford's got, and he's only really played since de December, whereas Fleming has played the entire season. In addition to that, they rely a little bit too much on transitional play, which is fine enough going from defence to attack really quickly. Works for a lot of clubs. It works for us as well. But when you've got a team against them who knows how to deal with transitional stuff like I think that we do, and that's something that we pay a lot of attention to, 
it's more of a weakness than a style of play. And in addition to that, they have a lot of incredibly hard challenges, but the problem is those hard challenges can often tend to become fouls. That means that they will end up fouling you in dangerous areas, and if they are fouling you in dangerous areas, then you've got an even better chance of breaking them down, causing them some problems, and ultimately scoring goals. And if you score a goal and you just decide to sort of behave in the box and hold yourself nice and sturdy and steady, then you're going to get a win against Millwall because they don't score that many times. In those past four matches that I was talking about, they've scored five. In the past six matches, they've scored five. They're not the best attacking side. So ultimately, what do Leeds need to do? I think there's a very clear template of how Leeds United can win this. First up, we need to limit Zion Fleming as much as feasibly possible. I keep looking this way because I've got various stats and stuff up. Fleming plays as a centre-forward for the most part, which means that I think we will see Ampadu and Rodon sitting in their centre-back positions as expected. But maybe Gruev will drop in a little bit more just to make sure that we've got three at the back. If they're doing the 4-4-2 thing, it just gives us one man spare. In addition to that, I think that we will try and encourage that transitional game a bit. Because whilst Millwall tend to play transitional football, that isn't an advantage when you're against a team that is on paper better than you. Transitional football is one of those things that turns into, if you have the better players, you will win. And I think that's where we're at. I think if we can make it transitional, we can hit them a lot on the counter, we'll be absolutely fantastic. And in addition to that, need to make sure that we are using Somerville and Nonto to attack that back line. They are two incredibly tricky players that like dribbling and like to sort of attract tackles and fouls. With the fact that they give away a lot of free kicks and a lot of fouls and cards, that's something that we can use to our advantage. Yes, Somerville and Nonto might get kicked a couple of times by them, but in the end of the day, if they've won a penalty or someone's gotten sent off, that gives us a huge advantage. And in addition to that, that is going to happen. They are going to get kicked, and the substitutions will make a colossal difference to how Leeds United play in this match. Dan James, off the bench, is going to be spectacular because it's not the youngest back line Millwall have. It's something that can quite easily be gotten at, especially if you've got someone quick like James on your side that is direct and is going to create several different chances. And bringing him on on the 60th minute when their defence is starting to tire already, perfect. So, all that considered, what are my predictions for the game? First up, it will be a very agricultural game, very kicky, very aggressive. They will try and win it through sheer wearing us down. It'll be like Wednesday, it'll be like Huddersfield, but I think we should be okay. And I do think it'll be a closely fought game throughout. And we are likely to concede from a set piece because Millwall are very good at set pieces and every goal that we have conceded in 2024 in the league has been from a set piece rather than open play because we're good at shutting down open play opportunities. But ultimately, I think we have enough in the tank to win this. I'm going to go with 2-1 to Leeds, but I want to know what you think as well. Let me know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, even become a channel member if you fancy. It's a couple of quid a month and it's much appreciated. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you later. Before you go, I forgot to mention that I am fundraising for Leeds Mind, which is a really, really good charity. I'll pop a link in the description below. If you haven't yet, I would massively appreciate a donation. I'm trying to get to £210 over the weekend, which is the distance between Leeds and Millwall. If you can help, that would be hugely appreciated. Cheers.